हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक सो टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट दिस लैनिक्स डायनेमिक लाइब्रेरी कंसेप्ट्स एंड इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस लाइब्रेरी कंसेप्ट्स बिकॉज व्हेन यू आर गोइंग टू डेवलप एप्लीकेशन सो एट दैट टाइम लिनक्स लेवल एप्लीकेशन your application may be using static as well as a number of dynamic libraries so to understand that from which location it will take the library and how you can customize the path and how you can analyze different you know working of the libraries so this will really help in developing application in uh, linux and as well as in embedded linux if you are going to uh, develop for a particular uh, processor okay so anyway that um, this message is for Uh, basically those who are directly going to this um, uh, my blog site so uh, so that they can uh, uh, you know look into this youtube video for detail and uh, i discuss about linux uh, build terminology tool chain static dynamic libraries and brief in the last block so i strongly recommend you to read earlier block for further understanding and also subscribe uh, this youtube channel so that you don't miss any uh, important uh, discussion and uh, if you find something missing please don't hesitate to provide the feedback and so that um, you know i can take corrective action so last time i discussed about that using this nm command so uh, why when to use this nm command when to use the read help and obj dump so most of the time actually um, nm i use just to clarify my this concept uh, normally uh, you can think of uh, mainly read help or obj dump and in fact read help will help you even in windows system and linux system so i will be using read help most of the time okay so this is sufficient basically so when to use a static library so when you have a, uh, a small application you know compact application then it is always advisable to use this static library and you can use it independently but if your uh, application depends on uh, number of um, libraries okay and so then it is always advisable to uh, use the dynamic um, uh, libraries and um, especially when it is um, working under an operating system because operating has system has the feature uh, to you know uh, this uh, dynamic link uh, library so that if more than uh, two applications are uh, being used you know so here is actually i will quickly go through this uh, uh, link this provide the exact uh, concept uh, so this is a good um, link and it provides lot of information on that um, dynamic linking uh, so um, i i just to um, clarify the concept here so suppose there are two program running under linux so if the static library is there so dot a is the extension and definitely both are uh, uh, working separately no issue that is one thing but at the same time you will notice that both are uh, taking that uh, memory uh, of that you know system so the memory utilization uh, is not that good for a small application it's fine but if it is a if you are application using lot of libraries so it is always advisable to use that shared libraries dynamic libraries 
dynamically linked libraries so uh, this is the concept and how it happens this is also it pointed like here uh, linux library the static shared shared may be dynamic linking and dynamic loading two branches so we will discuss that static you know that that a particular module will be linked with um, your application itself and uh, shared means that um, it will be either dynamically linked or dynamically loaded so what that does that mean let's try to understand so dynamically linked library so linux uh, automatically loads the uh you know required library so one of the process do we load that if if not already loaded uh, once um, it it looks into that you are um, a elf file so once the executable file uh, you try to execute elf file uh, so um, we have already uh, you know gone through that elf and dwarf related in the last programming concepts uh, block and um, Uh, we have seen the uh, many uh, sections there so today we will discuss specific to this library related concept that particular section we did not touch that time uh, so the address relocation is uh, managed with basically uh, the concept we call plt process procedure linked uh, linkage table and and this um, got this global offset table uh, so what is this so this is basically if you have um, uh, you know whatever library you use um, whether it is a static or dynamic your application must know the address where it should jump to use the function particular function of uh, the library whether it is static or dynamic one possibility could be that um, you fix the address uh, and that address you put in um, you know Uh, in, in that uh, beginning uh, uh, during the build build time itself but then there is a problem that you are bound to uh, compile your application every time that address change suppose your application is uh, final released version but library version keep changing and um, uh, that Uh, library um, uh, you know that address loading address if it is different it is shared library so you have to recompile your um, application so that's why they, they created what uh, one concept um, very good concept that is called procedure uh, linkage table and uh, another is called the global um, offset table and based on this uh, and there is a section uh, there and interpreter is there so the interpreter run time uh, you know run time uh, uh, resolve this address related things so the whatever address is being provided uh, with um, at the build time that particular table has to be uh, uh, linked with or you know uh, it has to find a specific uh, exact address of that shared library okay so how it does that let, let, let's try to see um, uh, that um, program here and so i have one program here so last time we discuss you know the uh, z option for uh, creating that uh, dwarf symbols so i will i will use this particular command and uh, um, here Uh, so i will also show you that uh, exactly what is this uh, uh, file under consideration uh, yeah, so this is the small application i have written so in that if you see there are two commands print up taken from the standard c library using this header and another is the scanner which also there and uh, another is that square root function taken from the math library so this should at the run time resolve these addresses corresponding to these two if this function is being called okay so when we read this uh, yell a file uh, hello_g option 
So here you can see different um, sections and here clearly it is saying this particular requesting program interpreter at this location. This is the interpreter which will resolve this, uh, you know, uh, address or um, loading related stuff uh, during the runtime. Okay, so uh, dynamically linked uh, library. So what happens? Linux automatically loads that uh, required library if not already loaded. Then your program has uh, not to worry about that who does that this uh, particular uh, you know this interpreter and uh, I mean it, if it is already loaded then it will simply map that address and uh, what is the dynamically loaded modules this is most of the time you will be using this for developing your driver uh, module and all registering to the Linux and uh, so module based uh, programming so that we will be using uh, during the, our development uh, so inserting the module you know and removing the module and um, calling the module so that is the dynamically loaded module second method okay so how to check that uh, first of all whatever application suppose you have any application in this particular case I have this object I can use um, this uh, read help command itself um, so what I can do read help and uh, from that you know that I can use this and the program name is you know that hello and what is the LF name actually with Z and then you know that I can use pipe command uh, to cut exactly grab the pattern needed means this is required for this particular binary to execute so we got two files here one is the math file math library another is the standard C library taking care of print up or all those kind of command and we, we can use LDD also and uh, but careful using LDD if you are not sure about um, you know that uh, authentication of the application you are trying to use uh, test okay and by the way um, so far now we know that okay it, it requires the, these libraries but how our um, you know application find the required dynamical uh, dynamically linked shared libraries uh, we already know there is something called path but that path is mainly for executable and all that so what about the dynamic libraries so and this is being done um, basically um, what happens that it uh, there is a mechanism for um, caching that these path um, uh, in advance and this is required because if it is going to search the required libraries when you execute the program then it is definitely impacting the performance so that's why there is a mechanism for that so we, we should be able to know that what is that already cached path using the LD config and uh, this command so you can see lot of these commands um, all already in the cache and uh, basically um, ld config if you simply use ld config so it will um, uh, reboot this cache if some somehow it is corrupted or you are going to uh, load a new library then and you can see this particular configuration is based on ld dot so dot con file if you see the configuration file there here it provide that include this particular folder so if you go this particular folder what you will find etc and ld dot so dot con and then within that if you try to find out this uh, just a moment uh, I think there is uh, dot b as well 
and uh, okay so a mm, uh, lot of files are there let's try to see this standard library because we know this very well and uh, this is for what it gives mm, so library c dot con so you will know that it has already searched that particular file that is that user local library so you exactly know where exactly that particular um, library in advance okay so is there any other way this is the standard library once you run uh, the linux whether it is a desktop um, you know, whether it is a embedded system you know uh, in the arm based system or any embedded system power pc or whatever risk risk by wherever so this is the standard way of that finding the library uh, but many time you may require okay i have to use my library customized library i am i don't want to use this lab particular library or maybe uh, i have uh, to test a new library okay then there is a requirement of another um, variable that is ld underscore library path which normally our loader at runtime will look into this first whether it is set or not now let's see how 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 we will come to know that whether it is set or not in my system uh, let's try to use this command environment it will give all the environment and uh, i can always you know that um, grab particular pattern of this ld library uh, let me give you library path let uh, oh it's not there so it means that it is not defined so it will take the standard library so if you use the export command define it you can divert that um, library path so this is how it works okay then well, let's try to analyze using our uh, gdb this is standard um, file how the runtime because uh, so far whatever we have analyzed either the path is there or build time we have seen the ldd command or read help command so that is that um, uh, build based but now we have a situation where we need to know at the runtime how it is behaving so we have to use gdb okay that's why i i covered like um, draft related information in the programming concept in advance so that i can um, move into this gdb stuff now you know that already this um, debugging symbols are there uh, so what i can do and uh, we should be able to see sources and all that so gdb hello so this is right now a native debugging and you also know that what is the native debugging based on earlier discussion means that we are not doing any remote target debugging we are we have right now this x86 uh, underscore 64 platform and uh, desktop within that um, you know uh, this um, virtual box and within that this uh, linux and we are testing a application on this platform okay so let's gdb this and now gdb prompt will come and at this time i have to uh, so we know anyway this this program is under consideration so what i would like to see for example if i i can check the print up how it goes to print up so um, first we will verify um, uh, let's see uh, i i will start it the program and i have given whatever command i am using no i have given a list here what the this start and all that no uh, this start run the program until main so it will run the program until main so if i start it it will break there then okay up to main and now i i would like to now program is loaded and executed till main so let's try to see what is there in this what sources are involved in this my small application oh, lot of files lot of files you know so this is the sources involved because these files are part of the library and we have that um, uh, 
debugging information inbuilt in this particular uh, ALF so that's why we are able to see the complete path and the files and let's see different sections we are discussing about so here you can see all that uh, we discussed tax section and all those kind of stuff we discussed uh, so here is the uh, one thing I would like to show you here just a moment before um, doing this I don't want to um, stop this particular execution let me try to come uh, so this is uh, day 9 the read L suppose if I list only um, this thing I think we have already seen that but let me again go through that hello with this okay so I think we have already seen if not then requesting the programmer interpreter this okay so this kind of uh, section also you will see here the complete sections whatever sections involved in this whether you know God concept and uh, PLT concept uh, so that is there so right now my intention is uh, not to go to the God and PLT um, thing if, if you would like to um, uh, further look into that uh, please um, you may go through this particular link that I have already provided so that discuss completely how these things you know got and all those kind of things uh, uh, and uh, not required in fact so let's just try to see just practically how uh, this is happening so now here I can list what is the my program this is the program and I can put um, let's say Black point at eight. Let's say black at the eight. Mm -hmm. Black point and I can I can I should be able to double check that whether my break point is there. Okay, fine. It's there and then just continue. It will hit the break point and see the disassembly there. Mm -hmm this assembly or we can use complete disassemble hmm? so my program counter is here and if I step to time here and alternatively we can use this uh, I think uh, let me try or uh, we can directly use this command so program counter and if I there are commands I sorry so I need single step single step let's see where, where it is going Uh, here inside this okay so I would like to go inside this particular function so single step uh, so far um, uh, so far did you notice one thing if I look into the address that address is this is the 400 5c6 address and I think it should be some start address should be there somewhere mentioned in uh, my uh, this thing uh, that uh, whatever I um, have taken the info file yeah the entry point 400 so that is the entry point and in the I mean in the same context this address is there and from the disassembly also we can see that uh, this assembly oh mm, no function okay because right now it is uh, not in this particular context so it will not so, so that let me single step 
single step so now it has resolved it is inside this function to resolve this now we should be able to see this okay now in it is in a code which for uh, dl runtime resolve um, function so i am interested in um, basically that let's see uh, go to the end of this this so i will put this particular address let's try to put this whole address i will put a breakpoint here so how we can put a breakpoint here break star and copy the address breakpoint okay we can check our breakpoint fine and uh, now continue till the breakpoint and see the disassembly so it is here so let single step single step so now it is inside uh, this um, print up command you know that uh, if i disassembly again still whether it has resolved or not we need to make we need to just check whether it is inside print. yeah print up so do you see this address change now so this is the address it has resolved for the already shared library printer and similarly similarly i leave this um, rest of the exercise to you that you can put a breakpoint for this square root function and go inside that let it resolve that address and now find out that okay so this is this was regarding this um, particular um, how it uh, works for um, dynamically loaded um, linked library I, we have not yet discussed uh, like um, uh, this loaded module using insert module and all those kind of things right now we have not discussed that we will discuss later when we work on the kernel level you know inserting the module and all that and so that is different thing and uh, uh, thanks for um, your time and hope you um, like this and uh, please uh, subscribe and share to the relevant folks for this um, particular uh, youtube channel um, okay have a great day